There are games that I've tried to play and just haven't been able to get through first time. Or sometimes even second time. Sometimes even third. And Pillars of Eternity by Obsidian Entertainment is one of those. I did eventually get through it. I also have played some of Pillars of Eternity 2 and tried to just catch up to the story that way. But again, there was a disconnect and I just had to shelve both of them. But I was going back through my collection going, what is on my list that I really want to do? Because some of these games are great in lots of ways. You know, mechanically they work or the story's really interesting or something like that. But just something stops me. With Pillars of Eternity, the first time I tried playing it, it was my first foray into the Endless Paths of Cadnua and the huge Spider Queen. That freaked me out. I put it down for a good long while and went, no, thank you. Then I looked up, is that the worst of it? And as long as you don't sort of flee, you don't get the spiders filling the screen, etc., that's the worst of it. And I'm like, that wasn't too bad. I can deal with this. So I tried again and sort of plowed away, but there was a, a time where reading in games was anathema to me. And there's a lot of reading, obviously, in these types of games that are based on the old Infinity Engine games from way back, like Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, etc. So it just had a moment of, no, I, I, I can't deal with this. I'm putting it to one side. But I started getting into Critical Role, and I knew they did the voice and character pack for the sequel. And I was like, I'll give it a go, because hopefully it'll catch you up and you don't need to import a save. It helps, but you can make it. So I was like, I'll do it that way. Got a bit in and I just, again, felt a weird disconnect to the world because I hadn't spent all that time in it before. As much as I was enjoying the cast of Critical Role around me. But, I, you know, it's one of those things that I've tried again and, again, just fell by the wayside. But this last time, something clicked. I don't even know what it is. My patience for reading Walls of Text was obviously a lot better as well. I was fine with that, but just something clicked. I was like, I'm invested in this world. I did the entirety of the Endless Pass of Cad Nua and upgraded the fort above to maximum in all areas. I went through all of the companion quests. I did a ton of the side quests. I even did the companion quests and the actual plot for the White March part one and two. I may not have 100%ed the game, but I was certainly possibly in the high 80s to 90s. And I don't know why it just clicked for me, but it did. But like Fallouts of Old and Fallout New Vegas, we did have the classic Obsidian end cards telling you what's gone on with all the characters. You know, how these people's lives have changed following your events. And I know some of that might be slightly retconned in Pillars 2, but for the most part, it's a good indicator of this is how you've left the world. And the real crux of, of my love for this game, I suppose, came from the fact that there are choices I made that I thought were good choices, that I thought would come out in the best way. I was going for the best ending possible to make the world great in Pillars 2 when I get round to it. But... Some of the choices you make seem great on the surface, but they're not. And this is what I love about Obsidian's games in general. The idea that you are making a decision in the world doesn't necessarily mean that you know how that will play out. Everything that you do now, you think you're doing it for the best reasons, but it may not happen that way. The particular example, for, for those who are like, what, 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 was it, what was it that gave you this reaction? Was the Radrick's Holt. I killed Radrick and thought, you know, installing new people, it would be a better solution. But no, it made him come back as some kind of evil figure and actually implement all the bad things, even to a greater degree, because of his anger for you. I did what I thought was best for the area, what I thought was best for the people in this world, and I chose poorly. You chose poorly. But it was my choice. I'm not going back into the game or downloading a save file editor. This is the world that my character, Chandara, the cleric, priest, as they call him, 
you know, that's the world that she made. That's what her legacy is. That's the world going into Pillars 2. And I love that. But it does link very well to what's going on in the world now. Because even at this point, we've still got things going on with the big global thing that everyone knows about. And the choices that we're making, both on an individual level and at higher levels, all seem to be for a good reason to us or to those we care about. We are thinking that what we are doing is best. But I think the lesson from these kind of games with full choice and consequence scenarios is you really need to think about the end solution. Of course, we can only act on the information we have right now. That goes without saying. None of us is clairvoyant. I don't think that that is entirely feasible. There are some people who may have really good, good instincts, but no one can actually predict the future with 100% certainty. So, yes, I'm saying that you know none of us will know exactly how it pans out, but I think we need to make sure that we are weighing all of the pros, all of the cons, so we don't have a guy coming back from the dead and making things worse for us. But this isn't, you know, meant to be a rant about the world or, you know, a big education about that. I just thought it was weirdly telling that I wanted to do this now when this was going on and the link was just there for me. So if you've not played these type of games but you're interested, please, you know, go and buy them. Go and support these developers. Go and enjoy yourself in worlds that aren't dealing with a crisis right now or at least are dealing with a different one that you can actually make a meaningful difference about but also remember that you can make a meaningful difference in your own lives and those around you so that's all i want to say about pillars of eternity went a bit sidetracked into a bit of a rant but it's me what do you expect but i'll be back next time with something completely different so until then as always thank you for watching and take care